Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, something wonderful. (laughs) If you've then been raised with Christ to a new life, how many of you have been raised with Christ to a new life? Thus sharing His resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek. Seek is an extremely strong word. It means to crave, pursue, and go after with everything you've got. Seek the rich eternal treasures that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. In other words, keep your mind on the right thing. And set your mind, (laughs) and keep them set on what is above, the higher things, not on things that are on this earth. You got to learn how to think about high things, not low things. Now, I want to spend the rest of the time that I have this morning talking to you about the power of a made-up mind. You see, I'm often amazed by who ends up with victory and who doesn't, by who overcomes their problems and who doesn't. I'm amazed that two people can be abused, mistreated, abandoned, hurt terribly. One person will take a hold of God and get over it and do fruitful things with their life. Another person will stay in counseling their whole life. They just spend their whole life as a victim. God's no respecter of persons. Can't be God's fault. I said it can't be God's fault. Boy, it's the devil. Well, but he's after everybody. So there's more to it than that too. We have to take responsibility. And we have to say, if anybody can get well, I can get well. If anybody can overcome, I can overcome. If anybody can get out of debt, I can get out of debt. Amen? Amen. And then you have to make your mind up that you are never going to give up and you are going to have all that Jesus died for you to have. And don't think for one minute that the devil will roll out a red carpet and say, oh, that's a good decision you've made. I'll stop bothering you. (laughs) No, he will ramp it up to a new level. He will turn that fiery furnace up and make it seven times hotter than it was before. And when he does, then you've got to dig down deeper and you say, you didn't hear me. I said, I will. I have got my mind made up. Come on, I want you to get it today. The power of a made-up mind. Don't be wimpy in your mind. Well, I can't, and it's too hard, and it's not fair, and it's the devil, and I don't have anybody to help me, and nobody loves me. <laughs> you say, well, you don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I do understand, and that's why I'm telling you the truth today. I do understand. I absolutely do understand. And I know that if you don't make a decision that you're going to have what Jesus died for you to have, that there will always be some devil or some mean-spirited person standing around to take it away from you. Today, I want you to make your mind up. I want you to set your face like flint, dig in both heels, and say, this is the day that my life begins to turn around. I want you to get mad in the Holy Ghost. I want you to have some holy anger and say, devil, you have stolen from me long enough. I am going to do my part, and I am not going to quit. I am going to have what Jesus died for me to have. And you know, I, I... I'm glad that there's a fire that's stirring in you, but I want to tell you the truth. It's important that I tell you the truth. When you go home, delirious won't be with you. (laughs) I won't be with you. 
but God is with you. And when it comes right down to it, in your midnight hour, you've got to get a hold of God and say, I will go through. Don't be another statistic of somebody with a bumper sticker and no life to back it up. God has a good plan for your life. You didn't miss the boat. It's not too late for you. You're not too old. You haven't made too many mistakes. God has a good plan for your life. But you've got to learn how to think like God thinks and say what God says. And you have to learn how to stop living by your feelings. We love to tell people how we feel. We need commitment. We don't need excitement. To excite means that you have to have some outside stimulus to keep you stirred up. I don't need that anymore. To commit means you take action deliberately. Amen. You do something on purpose. Now, there's some areas that I made my mind up in, and there's actually a lot more than this, but I thought I'd share a few of them with you. I made my mind up that I'm going to have peace. <laughs> now, I lived without peace for a long, 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 long time. There's always something to be upset about if you want to be upset. The devil sets you up to get you upset. He knows what's going to bother you, and he makes arrangements for it. So you got to stop expecting all your circumstances to change, and you have to say, I'm the one that's got to change. I'm going to start having a different response to things. One of the things I had to learn to do if I wanted to have peace was stop overloading my schedule. Don't be committed to something that no sane person could keep up with. Amen? Be willing to adapt and adjust yourself to people and things. Don't have a mindset that you're going to have to get your way all the time to be happy. Because there... Today, something's going to happen that you don't like and something you didn't plan for. And what you need to do is make your mind up. Set your mind early in the morning. If my day doesn't go the way that I've got it planned, I'm going to stay in God and I'm going to stay calm. You got to make your mind up. Set your mind ahead of time. I want you to start taking 10 or 15 minutes in the morning, part of your time with God, and I want you to make your mind up about some stuff. I want you to say, today I'm going to stay peaceful. And when you start to feel yourself getting upset, you know it starts down here. You can, then just say, no. <laughs> Been there, done that, not going there again. It's amazing how much peace you can have if you mind your own business. It's unbelievable how many times in my life I've gotten myself upset over something that had nothing to do with me. I got into something that I could have just as easily stayed out of. Come on, can I get a good amen? amen? Don't dig around and try to find out stuff that you're going to be better off not knowing. Amen? amen? Somebody said last week, oh yeah, they were talking about you on the radio again. I said, I don't want to know. Before I was like, what did they say? Who was it? <laughs> All it's going to do is get me upset. I've set my mind that I'm not going to be easily offended. I have set my mind that I am hard to offend. I am hard to make mad. I am not touchy. I am not easily offended. And if you bug me, I will forgive you. <laughs> I've made my mind up. Come on. Now I know, here it comes, but I feel. <laughs> eh, 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 eh. No more of that. I don't care how I feel, devil. I've made my mind up what I'm going to do. Is anybody getting this today? I don't care how I feel.
feel I have made my mind up what I am going to do. Now, my, my friend and coworker that I was telling you about that said last week she felt like hurting somebody, she said, I went home that night and just had a talk with myself. And she said, I said to myself, now come on, get your act together, straighten up, get over your pity party, and act the way you know you're supposed to act. You need to talk to yourself. Don't go talking to everybody else about, well, I just feel, and I feel, 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 I feel. No, go talk to yourself. Say, so it doesn't matter how I feel, I know what I'm going to do. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 and 24. But refuse, oh, I love this, shut your mind against. <laughs> Have nothing to do with trifling, ill-informed, unedifying, stupid controversies over ignorant questions. For you know that they foster strife and breed quarrels. But the servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, fighting, and contending. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, mild, tempered, preserving the bond of peace. He must be a skilled and a suitable teacher, patient and forbearing, and willing to suffer wrong. Go back to the first part of that. I want to read verse 23 again. But refuse, shut your mind against. Have nothing to do with trifling. That means petty. Ill-informed. Somebody who don't have a clue what they're doing trying to tell you something. <laughs> Unedifying, stupid controversies over ignorant questions. Come on, just be smart enough to say, I am not getting into that. I don't want to hear it. I'm not going there. The devil is not getting my peace. Amen? Amen. Another thing that I've set in my mind is I'm not going to spend my life trying to figure out stuff that only God knows and He's not telling me. <laughs> why, God, why? When, God, when? Why, God, why? Why do I feel this way? Why do I act this way? Why does Dave act that way? <laughs> How can you have four kids and all of them be so different? What did I do wrong? Why don't people talk nice about me? Why didn't that work? I thought it was you. When are you going to come through? Why, when, when, why, 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 when, when, when? If I would have walked in here today and said, how many of you have been experiencing a lot of confusion? I can almost guarantee you that 80 or 90 percent of the hands would have went up. God's not the author of confusion. You know how we get confused? Trying to figure out stuff that only God knows. You can't get confused if you don't get into reasoning. Well, what's going to happen to me? Who am I going to marry? Will I ever get married? What if I don't get married? What's going to happen when I'm old? Who will take care of me when I'm old? Rotating your mind around and around and around and around something. And the more you do it, the more frustrated you get and the more confused you get. And even when you think you've got it figured out, you still don't know nothing. <laughs> because whatever you think you've got it pegged to be, it'll end up to be something else anyway. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, I am determined, I have resolved to know nothing among you but Christ and Him crucified. I think the Apostle Paul had enough of trying to figure stuff out too. Is there anybody here today that would be willing to set your mind that you're not going to try to figure out stuff anymore? You're going to pray and ask God for supernatural understanding and you'll wait and let Him give it to you when He wants to give it to you. But, wh but why, why, what if, and, and what's going to happen? Well, Joyce, what if I never get married? 
well, then I guess you just won't be married. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> people that aren't married are sad, and people that are married are mad. So just, <laughs> well. Well, I'll go on and they can edit it out if they don't want it on TV. <laughs> people that aren't married want to have sex and people that are married don't. <laughs> we have got a problem. <laughs> Well, that went over better than I thought. Oh, it's a... oh, Jesus, you're so much fun. Hallelujah. I have made my mind up that I'm going to enjoy my life. <laughs> the devil stole my childhood but I'm going to be the happiest old lady he's ever seen. I know. Old in years. You know, I work hard, but I decided I'm going to enjoy myself in this pulpit. I'm going to have a good time in these meetings. I'm going to enjoy my husband, I'm going to enjoy my kids, I'm going to enjoy myself, I'm going to enjoy God, I'm going to enjoy my home. And the more I hear the junk that's going on in the world, every time I hear some new thing, I said, I'm going to enjoy my life. I'm not going to let the joy sucker suck my joy out of me because of everything that's going on in the world that I can't do anything about anyway. I'm going to do my part. To do what I can do, I'm going to pray and trust God, and I'm going to let my voice be made known, but however many days I got left, I'm enjoying them. Come on. Well, you just don't know how I feel. <laughs> don't make me come out there and get you. And I, I see all you watching my TV. Don't think that I'm just talking to them. You get up and you shake off that old icky feeling of down, 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 and you say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I will. I will. I got my mind made up. John 10, 10, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. If you're single, enjoy your freedom while you got it. If you want to go out there and buy some resources, you don't have to call home and find out from somebody if it's okay if you spend the money. Come on, you just do what you want to. <laughs> but if you got a husband, enjoy him. Don't nag him to death. Don't just see how much you can find wrong with him. The Bible says that a wife is to enjoy her husband. <laughs> well, that went over good. You all look like I shot you. <laughs> Come on, you need to lighten up and start having a little bit of fun with the person you're married to. I mean, Dave and I goof around all the time. We're always like, we're like the new Lucy and Desi show. You know, it's like, 
I mean, I finally figured out. It took me really, married 42 years. I didn't get this till about five years ago, but he ain't gonna change. <laughs> I got it now. I'm a slow learner, but I got it. And I'm committed. So if he's not gonna change and I'm gonna be committed, then I better just get happy. Amen? We get along so good now that we've made those decisions. It's just like, yeah, we do stuff together. I do stuff by myself. He does stuff by himself. Some nights he'll come home and I'll say, you know what? Go somewhere. <laughs> shoot, 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 shoot. I need me space. Amen? Amen? If you got a wife, be good to her. Treat her precious. Treat her good. Treat her like she's valued. My husband tells me every day that he loves me. Every day. He always tells me I look nice. I'm never even off of those steps over there to go down off this platform before Dave tells me that my message was good. Come on, encourage the person you're married to. I've made my mind up to be generous. I've made my mind up to walk in love. Oh, that's been a big one. We are so selfish and self-centered. What about me? 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 Oh, I got so sick of hearing that same song. It's time to sing a new song. I made my mind up that I'm going to walk in love. I'm going to treat people the way I want to be treated. I'm going to treat people valuable. Love is all about how you treat people. It's not in being able to quote a few scriptures. It's all about how you treat people. Don't be rude. Do not be a rude, obnoxious Christian. Amen? Yeah. Don't go out there and hurt somebody at the resource table trying to buy the last CD on love. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had it happen. You got to be determined to walk in love. You got to be determined to be generous. You can't go by your feelings because your feelings are always going to say, well, you don't have to do that. Give big tips. Don't give little tips. Buy nice gifts. Buy the kind of gifts for other people you want to get. Don't go through life singing, cheap, 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 cheap. <laughs> Come on. Well, why should I be nice to them? They're not nice to me. That's exactly why you should be, because you're like God. You can live on another level. You can rise above it. Set your mind and keep it set. Now, some of you need to set your mind to get your house cleaned up. Some need to set your mind to get your finances in order. Some of you need to set your mind to go home and get a better attitude with the person you're married to. <laughs> Sila, pause and calmly think about that. Some of you need to make a decision that you're not going to waste one more day of your life in self-pity. Some of you need to make a decision that you're done with living in the past. Some of you need to make a decision that you're no longer going to be a little bit mad at God because things haven't turned out in your life the way you thought they should have. Set your mind. And whatever you know God's will is for you, don't you ever get off of it. I want you to learn how to think the way God thinks and say what God says so you can have what God wants you to have. Amen? All right. Come on, you can get up on your feet. Hallelujah. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, and that means completely changed, by the renewal of your mind. Such a great scripture.
But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and you know taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, as we travel around the world, we meet so many wonderful children that have had such desperate need in their life. And we're so grateful to be able to help them. Today, we happen to be in Thailand. And this little boy's name is Somded. And he's had some tragic things in his life, but thank God, through your help, he's now living in the children's home here, and his life is looking very bright. His parents both died when he was six in an auto accident. And when they found him to bring him here to the home, he had had severe ear infections, which had caused hearing loss and lots of other problems in his ears. So he's had about two years of medical treatment on his ears, and thank God he can hear fine now. And so thank you for helping us provide homes for some dead and for other little boys and girls like him all around the world. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. En nu, let op! Geloof, liefde, hoop. Stop letting the disappointments of your past dictate your future. Get your hopes up and see what God can do. Durf te hopen. Dit boek zal je inspireren en enthousiast maken. Je mag iets goeds verwachten, omdat God goed is. Bestel nu het boek via internet bij joy-meyer.nl of bel 026-2022-100. Joyce Meijer, die is toch van tv? Wat doet ze nog meer? Ze schrijft boeken. Er zijn ook dvd's, themaboekjes, mokken. Hé, hey, dat kan ik allemaal niet onthouden. Daarom is er de Joyce Meijer info- en productbrochure. Die kan je kosteloos bestellen. Online of telefonisch. Super!